Welcome to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by Outback Steakhouse. We're at Caesars Palace, the home of champions, where the original field of 64 has been cut in half. Today, in the clubs and spades brackets, we have eight tables in action simultaneously. Let's meet the players. At table one, Huck Seed and Chip Reese. At table two, Tuan Lee and TJ Cloutier. At table three, Shannon Elizabeth and Jeff Madsen. At table four, Sean Chacon and the defending champ, Ted Forrest. At table five, Joe Hashem and Paul Wasica. At table six, Vanessa Russo and Barry Greenstein. At table seven, Annie Duke and Nam Lee. And at our feature table, Umberto Brenes goes heads up with Phil Locke. Let's get the cards in the air. Every poker player has a relatively big ego by nature, and this is a way to sort of be like, yeah, who's the man? That'd be me. To make this top 64 it is an honor in itself. It becomes such a landmark for all the poker players. It's the one tournament you just don't want to miss. A heads up, it's either me or them. One on one all the way through. It's really personal if you lose, so you just don't want to lose to anybody. Very, very tough for the 64 players. Most of them are considered the best in the world. Wow! Come on. You have my head spinning. Is the microphone picking up my heartbeat? I'm gonna win this! Yeah! When you play heads up, you have to be aggressive. You have to get in there, and you have to be able to read your opponent really quickly. This event gives you a chance, one-on-one, -on -one, to test yourself against the best in the world. Matt Vaskersian alongside Ali Najat at Caesars Las Vegas for the National Heads Up Poker Championship. 32 players remaining in this single elimination bracket style tournament as you look at the matchups in the clubs and spades brackets. Eight tables in play simultaneously in the Caesars Palace Poker Room and we'll go right to the action with 2005 World Series of Poker champ Joe Hashem up against 06 main event runner-up Paul Wasica. Joe Hatcham, a terrific ambassador during his one-year reign as World Series champion. He calls with King Jack offsuit. Paul Wasica. College didn't work for him, but poker certainly has. And Wasica with eight four checks, and the flop brings trip eights for Paul Wasica. And he'll check to try to trap Joe. Joe with a very disciplined check. Earns a three of diamonds. Now, the reason Joe checked that flop is because he knows that an ace is really the only card that's going to scare him on a board like that. On the river, a nine of clubs. And Joe called Paul's bet on the turn. He really didn't need to put in the raise. And at this point, with no diamond on the end, Joe figures his hand is good. Wow. I was planning to raise. I think I'll get the best hand. And you hear him say it there. 1,500 a call for Hashem. He raises to 4,000. 4, you were playing to and you still did? <laughs> because I decided that I still had the best hand. I really don't like this raise by Joe here. Oh, Especially my. after he talked during the hand. He essentially told Paul he had kings up. <laughs> I thought I was wrong and I still did what I was supposed to do. It almost sounds like Joe's sandbagging a little bit. Yeah, tough sell though. Paul's a sharp kid and Joe's an ex-world champ. Meanwhile, a kid who's still in college, promising youngster Jeff Madsen, taking on Shannon Elizabeth, famous for her role in the high school comedy, American Pie. I'm sure that Jeff and his buddies all know her by Nadia. Players in the round of 32, by the way, each start with 40,000 in chips. The blinds here are at two and 400. And this flop brings two pair for Shannon Elizabeth. Huge, huge flop for Shannon. No reason to bet. She checks over to Jeff Madsen, and Jeff is going to take a stab at the pot in position. Jeff bets 600, and Shannon quickly calls. Well, Jeff doesn't like to see that. Jeff has paired his nine on the turn now. Yeah, but it's unlikely that those nines are going to be any good. The only thing that he could beat here is a pair of sevens. Shannon bets 2,500, and Jeff's going to call it. 
I'm surprised Jeff doesn't fold this, Matt. He could be drawing dead against a straight. It's so unlikely nines are good. River was a four of clubs. Not a lot of safe cards on the river for Jeff Matson to have called the turn. Shannon bets 4,000 now. But that four is among them. And Jeff needs to get away from this. It's unlikely Shannon is bluffing. He calls. And Shannon Elizabeth takes down the pot. I have a straight. I'm crazy if I have a straight. <laughs> well, Matson's got a few World Series bracelets to his name, but I'm sure he didn't win him playing like that. Maybe a little rattled, drawing a Hollywood actress. But at this tournament, Shannon Elizabeth's more like a wide-eyed rookie. I'm ecstatic to move past the first round. I feel really honored to be asked to play in this thing. I mean, I'm among a group of 64 players. Most of them are considered the best in the world, and I'm really lucky to be here. I've been given some advice here and there. I'm gonna do my best. I think any of these tournaments, you're a two to one underdog from what I'm told. So everyone's got a shot. Well, Matt, the learning curve in poker these days is so steep. With online poker, people are able to amass a ton of experience in very short order. Shannon has benefited from that, I'm sure. 1200. Jeff suited King 10, and he raised it to 1200 here. Well, he's going to try to press the issue instead of limping in. Look at this flop for Shannon. She flops a straight. Yeah, gin for Shannon Elizabeth, the old nine high straight. Check, check, and the turn is a jack of hearts. Shannon bets 1,500. Chris. And Matson trying to buy it here. He raises to 4,500. Yeah, you're exactly right, Matt. Buy it is all he's trying to do. Now, he could hit a straight with a queen, a bigger straight than Shannon, but he's just trying to take it down. The raise. Raise. Shannon liking her straight, re-raises to 13,5. That's a good raise, considering Matson would have bet the flush draw on the flop. He doesn't have hearts, and he lays it down. Madsen folds as we check in with Shauna Hyatt. I'm here with Umberto and Phil. Umberto, are we going to see a little bit of the shark today? Yeah, the shark is hungry today. Do you know say shark in Spanish? No. Umberto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. How about how about you? Are you going to get a little uh, over the shark? I don't know. I just hope the shark doesn't attack me. I don't want to be I don't want to be uh, relegated down to push-ups and crunches. I I just want to beat him with the, with the cards. <laughs> No antics. All right, good luck, guys. Coming up, a showdown between two of the most colorful characters you'll ever see sit at a poker table. Humberto Brennis versus Phil Locke as the National Heads Up Poker Championship continues. Welcome back to Caesars Palace and the National Heads Up Poker Championship. At our featured table, a pair of exceedingly unique individuals squaring off Humberto Brennis and Phil Locke. Yeah, these two are the opposite of straight shooters. Suited jack nine for Umberto, he calls. And Phil with seven six offsuit. Check, check. Friendly, you know? They are a friendly game. And the flop, an interesting one. Sevens for Phil Locke, but a flush draw for Umberto. And Umberto will bet that draw. Nothing wrong with that. Phil calls. The turn, a third seven for Phil Locke. Phil will try to get Umberto to fire another shell, and Umberto doesn't bite. Good check. Rivers a deuce of clubs. Umberto makes his flush. Well, Phil has to bet 12. now. Getting 12. Phil bets 1,200. Can't risk letting Umberto check. Did you blow me the first hand? It's no good you try to blow. And a call. And a call from Umberto. It's no good you try to bluff Umberto. No bluff Umberto, Phil. It's not a bluff. No, it was not a bluff, kid. Trip, son. I thought I had the best in. 
Well, we've made it through the round of 64. We're into the round of 32 and in the clubs and spades brackets today and starting out at the feature table, a fun matchup. There will be a lot of histrionics, a lot of conversation between Umberto Brennis and Phil Locke. Yeah, there's no shortage of personality. These are two of the more colorful guys in all of poker. You may know Umberto from the 2003 World Series of Poker where he took a horrendous beat to be eliminated by Chris Moneymaker who eventually went on to win the tournament. Phil Locke is all over your television sets and all over the spectrum as well. Both of these guys can play a lot of poker, but I think we'll see Phil Locke advance. Translators and subtitlists are standing by at the feature table.